so wrestling, praying, looking at the prophetic words that have come to us. And we wanted to ensure the vision has been consistent to us. That is changing lives, building families and impacting nations. The two nations that we look at impacting in the divine timing of God is Alaska and Romania. That doesn't change. That's something that God has put in us. Some of you will see it birth in, in your lifetime. Some may see it in the next generation. I do not know, but as God has put that burden, we want to prayerfully seek for him to do open doors on the third part of our vision that is impacting nations. If some of you are looking at which nation you want to impact, the church is looking, the God has put on NFC, the nation of Romania and Alaska. Okay. As we move forward, so every year we go through a theme and the theme drives us and drives a vision to be achieved. We change lives, we build families, and we impact nations on the theme that drives us. And that is what I'm going to unpack to you today. Last year was a year of a theme which we called ourselves as prayer warriors, okay? As a, as a warrior's clan. We called ourselves as a clan that believes in a, a consistent, perseverant time of intercession. Somebody who wrestles with God. And part of that year that we spent wrestling with God, our prayer continued to be the theme and the song. Our worship leaders led many themes on prayer. Our worship leaders came up with songs that enabled, enabled us to be a warrior's clan. Prayerful life became a melody for us and they became songs in the night as some of us had gone through some medical, some turmoils in life. They went through prayer seasons and they have become songs through the watches of the night. God has enabled us to have a prayerful life last year. Prayer became a weapon for the child of God. It became a weapon for everything and all things. We became a clan that carried the weapon of prayer. We became a tribal clan, a tribe of God, a line of Judah. We became into plugged into songs of songs, of songs of songs of melody, songs of music. But our weapon that we use through the year 2020 is the weapon of prayer. We did not use weapons of carnalism, but we used weapons of prayer. We came to God, seeking God in prayer. We prayer invoked in us wrestling. It invoked in us seeking God. We sought God for jobs. We sought God for breakthroughs. We knocked, we fought, and we sought God's assistance and help at different levels of our needs as we went forward. So prayer warriors clan became a theme, a song, a melody, a song in the night, a weapon for us as we went through the year 2020. We did not know 2020 will be a COVID-19 year. We did not know that, but we, God gave us and said, you will walk through your vision this year through the theme of being a warrior's clan. And I want to thank God at this time. I want to thank God for Man, for, for Penmi, uh, for Nim, and want to thank God for uh, Burley and a couple of them who led us, even Jenny who led us, the children, on the same theme of being a warrior's clan. We had bands that we wore around, our uh, neon bands were given to you. In case you want it, feel free to reach back to us. We'll be more than happy to take it through. Let me just give you a snapshot of what Warriors Clan really took to us last year. Okay, last year was a year Warriors Clan spent a lot of time in praying. Okay, we had fasting prayer every month. We had uh, a 24 hour prayer chains. We invoked for some emergency issues. When we found it difficult, Warriors Clans got down to praying. We saw prayers answered in healing, marriages opened up. Many marriages happened in the year 2020. Safety was experienced by God. People traveled up and down during the pandemic. They were safe, protected by the hand of God. People had sustenance in jobs, protection of God in their jobs. We had high amount of immense stories of promotions during the season, highs during this season. It's an amazing story. You just now heard Tarun share a story to you this morning. Last year was a year of shutting down for his industry. But he saw an unusual providence of God and increase in his business. You saw Anisha Nofina shut down and from there God has rebuilt. It is all because we have stuck to our theme and our theme was a warrior's clan. We will take our weapons in prayer. We will seek God in prayer. We will call upon God in prayer. The stories of testimonies were immense, excellent to find our God live among our midst. God lived 
moved and had his being among us. And that's what Warriors Clan did to us last year. The prayer led us to reading the books of the Bible. We finished reading the book of Revelation aloud. We finished 1 Peter and 2 Peter. We finished the book of Esther, Jonah, Obadiah. And now we are processing through the book of Joshua. Prayer put in us a burden to read God's word and did not come, did not birth just suddenly out of summer. But through the season of prayer, God kept saying, get people reading my word, get them connected to the word of God, get them know my scripture. And that's when we began the season of reading the word of God aloud. And I know through the season of reading the word of God aloud, many of you have enjoyed the revelations that God gave to you as you prepared each chapter for each Sunday. As a family, you have worked towards knowing the word of God. Interesting, prayer was a theme. Warriors Clan was a theme. Even in a ZF Church, Zamorin Fellowship, and the NFC South stuck to that theme, and also the Central and the Neon Stars also had the same theme flowing through their curriculum led by Jenny and her team. They beautifully unpacked this team of Warriors Clan in the last year. These are some of the snapshots and the list can go on, but just to tell you where we have come through thus far. The era continues with prayer being a theme as we unlock the year 2000, 2021, okay? God put into my heart very specifically that this is going to be the foundational stone on which we're going to build this church over the next few decades of our life. Prayer continues to be our theme. Prayer continues to be the theme at which we will unlock, okay? But we've used Warriors Clan, and I'm, as, I, as I unpack what is the theme, we will look at some verses for us, okay? So prayer continues. So nudge your neighbor and say, I am glad. I want to say this to you, church, whether you like or don't like, we may not be able to render excellent service to you, but we can say this to you. We will consistently pray for you. If you have called or, called, called or informed us, we will be a people, we will be a community that will pray and pray and pray and pray. We do not know when God is going to answer, but we will be a community that can commit to you on one thing, that we will pray for you. We will continuously pray for you. Sunni and me and the teams are committed to pray for you. We will pray for our children. We will pray for their future. We will pray for their marriages. We will pray for breakthroughs to happen and we will see God and we will pray for the nations. We will pray for our leaders in this country. I liked auntie's points today. We will pray for our farmers who provide food. We will pray for issues that bring shame to Jesus Christ. We will continue to be a theme that continues. So if you signed up for NFC, you will be pushed into being a prayer warrior. You will be pushed into doing things in prayer. And prayer will be the theme as we continue to run through it. And this morning, I want to lay acknowledgements to, to some people who have, I want to thank God for all of you who've been part and parcel of the last six years of NFC's journey. I want to appreciate you. So many of you have been through, through with me for the last six years, some of you five years, four years, some of you as young as three months, one month, two months. Thank you for each one of you who's been with us on the theme, okay? I want to put it on record. I want to thank Stanley and Ismi, my mentors, who have always pushed through certain values. I want to say this to you. It is their value that I've learned about Sunday School. Many of you think Neon Stars, it is Stanley's value who pushed us. Even when the church began very early in my house, he consistently spent time to say, Ashok, you have to get the Sunday School going. You have to get the Neon Stars going. And I want to thank God for people like them who have really driven in us. And prayer is one thing that I've learned in my work, in my walk with him, he's always pushed us to prayer, to spend time in prayer. And I want to say that, you know, acknowledge it, give it to them, the investment of my leaders who put into me, into my life. And I'm able to bring it up to you this morning in all humility to ensure that they, the, 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 the people who work into my life as I waited on God the last eight weeks, okay? I want to thank God for my cell leaders who carry the same passion of prayer. I want to thank God for each one of them who have instilled prayer even in the cell groups. I really appreciate the passion of prayer that has got into it. We have become contagious, prayerful community. And I love that word to be called upon us. People say you are contagious, prayerful community. Praise God. We are a contagious. We spread prayer across the nations. We spread prayer across the people in these circumstances. And keeping this as a theme, I want to take you through a scripture verse this morning. If you ever picked up any book 
in systematic theology, if you ever spent some time understanding what theology is, the word of God, and you went through any book called systematic theology, you will find this particular verse under the subject of prayer. Okay, there are some 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 chapters of the Bible that will appear for you under the subject or under the title called prayer. And this is the most prominent chapter that appears in systematic theology on, uh, uh, on, on, on the subject of prayer. And the other chapter that appears under the subject of uh, subject of prayer in systematic theology is Solomon's dedication of temp the temp temple and Hannah's prayer for Samuel. But this appears as a rich substance for us to really look on. When I say systematic theology, I'm looking at all the six, six books of the Bible, holistic view of the, of the concept of prayer. And this appears right in the middle of that. So I've taken this chapter and this story for us to take us through this morning. Let me read this from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Listen to me as I read. If you want to follow your Bibles, feel free to follow your Bibles. Jesus told his disciples a parable. And he told this parable to show them that they should always pray and not to give up. This is a parable which has a purpose that Jesus had. The purpose was prayer. Not only prayer, that he taught, he told them this parable that they will always be praying people and not to give up the subject of praying. Okay. Both are very important. Today, Christians struggle with both the aspects. They don't like always to pray and they like to give up as early as possible. And Jesus said, I'm telling you this parable, so this will act as an antibiotic, antidote to you, that you will always be a praying community and never give up in prayer. Hallelujah. Okay. You will never give up. So if at all you need an antidote or you need a vaccine for you to be a praying community, get back to Luke 18 verses 1 to 8. This is an antibiotic that is going to push to you that you will be a praying community and never give up. Jesus said, I'm telling you this parable so that you as my disciples will never stop to pray and never give up on praying. That's the purpose why Jesus gave this parable. And this is the parable. Jesus said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared, cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I do not fear God or care about what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, if you have your Bible, underline the word bothering me. Okay, I'm gonna to explain to you what that word really means. I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Underline the word attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Underline the word day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice. If you have to paraphrase it, they will get justice and they will get it quickly. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? It's a beautiful parable. It's a beautiful story that Jesus said about it. A parable, okay? Uh, some scholars say he was referring to a particular widow. Some scholars say it could, could be a, a literal person that he had used. It doesn't matter, but this is a parable that Jesus said, okay? But the scholars tell us, this parable tells us how to live life after Jesus is left and what is expected when Jesus comes. The last line of this parable or the story tells us, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Or the other, other version says, will he find men praying still on the earth? Hallelujah. The second coming of Jesus, will he find a community that is a praying community? Okay, so let me just take some, some clues as I, as I set the stage of this parable. First, the unjust judge in the Bible, according to most of the commentaries, are compared to God. It is God that he is compared to, unjust judge who is not accountable to anybody. That's, that's, the, that's the similarity 
that is that is drawn or the acts of an unjust judge are almost like he doesn't care about anybody he doesn't care about anybody okay the other versions of the unjust judge maybe he was expecting a bribe maybe he's expecting something from the widow irrespective of what it is but the key point of the unjust is this okay this woman had undergone a certain period of pain she has undergone a certain period of rejection has gone through consistently a defeat through in the story and i've read couple of scholars and couple of bible teachers why did she had to go through and i like one particular biblical scholar who says that sometimes god does not answer our prayers immediately for two reasons okay i like this uh, scholar by the name jane uh, jane wayne who's written this particular article of the third century he says god does not allow us to have immediate answers for two reasons and i loved it and i was sharing with sunil i was sharing with what he says the first thing he says that he will not answer our prayers immediately because he wants us to undergo a certain amount of pain so that our faith gets refined hallelujah he wants our faith to be sharpened and apostle peter got it right when he writes it in one peter okay or james writes it okay or or a couple of scholars paul writes there is a season that god expects you to continuously pray so that you are able to see your faith alive and sharpened first reason okay second reason is this scholar says god delays answering prayer certain times so this is the only way we get to experience a glimpse of christ suffering hallelujah both are such strong theological justifications or understandings of the early scholars who wrote the bible in their in their understanding it is the only way you get to experience a glimpse of christ suffering and paul says i bear the marks of the cross on my body hallelujah and these are some indications of experience when you wrestle consistently in prayer you bear the marks of the cross you go through the journey and this widow has borne through those marks of consistent pain and suffering in the story of prayer this sets the theme this sets the understanding of what prayer really means i love i've been enjoying prayer in the last few for few years of of moving to bangalore and i'm enjoying the season of being somebody who calls on to god irrespective of whether he answers me immediately or not immediately so if you're thinking why on earth god is tearing he's tearing because sometimes he wants your faith to be sharpened he wants your faith to become like a sharpened sword and second we get to experience a glimpse of what christ has gone through like the injustice that this woman has gone through a glimpse of it not the full thing not the whole thing a glimpse of experience comes through a delayed prayer or a not an immediate but jesus says look at the judge i will ensure it will come to you quickly the word quickly in his own time it will come through and i have taken some key learnings from this story before i unpack the unpack the theme for us and i have taken three things why prayer through this parable is so important number one we are going to be a prayer praying community and if you are a praying community you must understand the three truths of this parable as i share with you number one the learnings on prayer are very important the first learning that comes to us through this parable is this the battle of prayer is a battle of non equals are you with me it's a battle of non equals when a christian gets to pray he is picking up a battle of non equals okay okay sometimes our prayers are answered but we are picking up a battle of non equals and i share my testimony to you i was going for the service selection board and i was sitting there i was just just came into the faith getting my uh, uh, reading the bible has become a passion my driven i used to read the bible in and out spend a lot of time reading as a young christian knowing the lord more and more and i was going for the service selection board and i was there sitting in the interview room and all the people who were there with me about close to about 40 45 cadets who had come or for the selection who had come they were all preparing for the interview and guess what they had in their hand they had manorama yearbook 
of one, two, three, and they were reading Manorama yearbook because they're going for the interview and they were all getting prepared. And I was sitting in one corner reading my Bible. Okay? And, and people made fun of me. People said, my goodness, what are you reading the Bible at this time? God helps those who help themselves. Some of the, one of the guys told me, you know, some of the phrases that did. For me, this was my weapon, okay? And I knew that my ability, my talent, my resources will not help me to get the SSB center. It is only because it is a battle of non-equals. God fights on my behalf. I will get through. And I went for the interview and guess what my interview was, okay? Many people came back discouraged out of the interview. My interview was out of my CV, okay? It was written there. The Navy sent my CV and the Navy said, religion, Hindu. And the CV that I filled, the first CV that I filled says Christian. And the board president picked up my conversation. Why Navy says Hindu? Why you're a Christian? What happened? How did it change? And I ended up sharing my story in my interview. Hallelujah. And that is all my interview was all about. He asked me, what about your dad? Did you get? He was more curious about my faith. And guess what? I stood second in the order of merit when the list was out. I'm sharing this to you to say battle of prayer is a battle of non-equals. We win battles not because we are able to win. We are unable to win. In this case, the widow and the judge are no matches to fight about. Are you with me, church? Okay. If you feel like saying an amen, say an amen. It's a battle of non-equals. With God, it is never the battle. You know what? The brightest of the Old Testament said, there is none who's equal to him. Hallelujah. I, in my capacity, cannot reach where I've reached today. It is only because I have, through prayer, won a non-equal battle. Hallelujah. We have run and won a battle of non-equal. Let me just help you unpack this, okay? Look at these certain things that are, it is a powers of a magistrate in our country, okay? Let me transpose the whole parable into Indian context, okay? Let's take the judge of our own country, okay? Transposition is a biblical word. You can, you can it's permitted in, 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 in explaining a parable. So I'm using a transposing of culture to an Indian culture from this parable, okay? I've just taken the powers of a magistrate. The powers of magistrate in our country, a chief judicial magistrate may pass a sentence approved by law, accept that sentence, imprisonment, and also imprisonment for a term that may extend for seven years. Look at the powers of a chief judicial magistrate. A magistrate of first class can imprison you for three years, okay? And also incorporate fine. A, a court of, uh, of a second class magistrate can imprison you for more than one year, fine of thousand rupees or more, okay? Uh, I, okay, a chief Judicial magistrate can give you more. I have just missed the powers of a magistrate. And look at this widow trying to take on a battle with a magistrate, with a judge of a town. Hallelujah. The judge would have said, sentence her. She's been irritating me. Contempt of court. Put her into three years of imprisonment. Seal her. Solitary confinement. Correct? She's battling with somebody who's not her co-equal. Let me transpose the culture of a widow into our, into our context, okay? What is a widow for us in Indian context? In Indian culture, she's not even permitted to adorn and maintain her beauty. She can't even put a beautiful uh, face or go for a beauty parlor. Our culture has restricted her significantly. They are often abused women and they're outcasted in the Indian community. They are asked to die with their husbands, thanks to William Carey, who abolished Sati, and they don't have to do that. But there are still communities that push their wives or women, uh, widows, into a burning fire. Okay? They were ignored and often sexually exploited for daily needs. Many of them in India are the temple beggars in our country. Is there any match between a metropolitan magistrate and a widow? Do you think the match is equal? And how many of you think this is an equal match? This is definitely not an equal match. There is no comparison between both of them. The Bible says God is a defender of a widow and a father to the fatherless. And therefore, all through the Bible, if you find, God has a special place for those who feel weak and are unable to fight their battles. 
okay? In Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12, okay? There is a special tithe. Some of us think we will take a tithe and distribute to the widows. Don't do that. There's a special tithe. You're supposed to tithe more. One special tithe once in three years in addition to your tithe goes to exclusively to a widow or orphan. Those of you following the Old Testament, if you're a generous giver, this doesn't apply to you. But those of you follow the principle of tithing, please, this is a special tithe that God has called out. Very special tithe. If you do a mathematical calculation, I remember Stanley did for us in one of the leadership conferences, 13.5% every year would be your actual tithe. If you actually follow this Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 13. But what I want to try across is the tithe is not important. What I'm trying to drive across is God had a special care and providence that came for widows. Okay. You shall not ill treat a widow or an orphan. You do not mistreat them. I will heed their cry as soon as they cry out to me and my anger shall blaze forth and I will put you to sword and your own wife shall become widows and your children as orphans. What a, what a powerful way God is saying. If you ever meddle with a widow, I will ensure that your own family, you will die and your wife will come to a place of becoming a widow. God was very particular when it comes to uh, protecting the widows and orphans. He's a father to the fatherless. And is a defender of a widow is what the Bible records for us. This is not a battle of equals. What is so unique about this widow? If this is not a battle of equals, what is it? She never moved from a persistence. Hallelujah. She never moved from her course. She was so rigid, so rigid that she continued to stick there. Social stigma and opinions of others never mattered to this woman. Really didn't matter to what people say. She lost her case so many times. It's almost like going for one scan, hoping the next scan will be better. The next scan will be better. And every scan only says your story is finished. And this is like the lady going up again, putting a petition, reopen my case, case dismissed. Again, she goes, reopen my case, case dismissed, case dismissed, case dismissed. Consistently, she has seen defeat. She moved in the power of consistency and a deep sense of passion. Okay, that's the uniqueness of this. She demanded justice against her advocacy. Hallelujah. She did not budge what about people said. She did not say, oh, I'm tired, exhausted. But she believed, she believed that I am going to stick and press on to see justice done. Every time she lost a case, the problems worsened for her. Some commentators say that her problems became more worse. Remember, she's catching up in age. She's catching up in energy. And in spite of all that, she stuck. I am amazed with the passion of this woman. I am amazed. Reading through this parable, I am amazed. You know the key part? She moved forward and saw the end every time she moved forward. She would move a little bit in prayer and see the end. Little bit, see the end. To know for sure that persistence will pay for us. Principle number one through this parable. We as a community will fight battles of non-equals. Whether it is sicknesses, whether it is financial problems, whether it is breakthrough in evangelism, we will take up battles where we are no matches to them. I do not know how to evangelize this word. I have no idea, but we will take up the challenge because prayer is taking up challenges of non-equals. A widow took on the judge of the town, a chief, chief metropolitan magistrate. She took on a magistrate face-to-face, -face, persistent in her. So is prayer. And Jesus says, that is how I want you to pray. That is how I want you to pray. Do you think the government will change? I do not know, but I will persistently seek God that this nation will be a nation that will protect the rights of women and children and they will be protected in this nation. Abuse will not happen. Our women will be protected in this nation. There will not be rapes in this country. I do not know. It's a big battle, but I will take up a battle of non-equals like the persistent widow and move forward to press on. Are you with me? You can just say, raise your hand or say hallelujah as we fight battles of non-equals. Principle number one from this story. If you are part of a prayer chain in this year, remember, we will take up battles which are closed. Cases where the judges said dismissed, we will seek in prayer. Cases where doctors have given a verdict, we will take it up in prayer to see justice is done through the power of prayer as you move forward. 
The second thing that we need to pick up from this story is this prayer is bothering God. Okay, I told you to underline that word, bothering God. I love this word and I had to really do a lot of study to understand this word from the original Greek sense because the word bothering generally used in our culture of India is irritating. Okay, you heard, why are you bothering me always? Why are you irritating me always? Okay, I want to tell you the story of my cricket, how I got my cricket bat. Okay, many of you may remember, buying a cricket bat in my childhood was like buying a BMW. Generally, we would play cricket with a borrowed bat. Somebody rich in the, in the team only has one bat. And that fellow has a demand. Whenever he comes to the batting crease, he'll say, my bat, batting, I will be the first one to bat. And many times he gets out of the first ball and he will always say, no, 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 my bat is mine. And if we, if we offend him, he will take the bat and go off. So all of us cannot play. So it used to be a big problem. I, I don't know how many of you relate with me in this story in my, in my growing years. It used to be a big frustration every time we would play. And how did I get my first cricket bat? Okay. I would go to my dad every day. Every day. Every day, he would, I would bother him, dad, bad, dad, bad. There are times when my dad got so angry. I remember once my dad really beat me up because bat buying those days was expensive. But I continued to bother, continue to bother, continue to bother, continue to bother. I started bothering him from my seventh standard. You know, when did I get my first bat? I got my first bat in 10th standard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. It's amazing that I persistently sought, persistently sought. And sometimes my dad would take me to the cricket bat shop and he would walk in and say, I, I don't think there are, there are. He would go and tell that guy, if anybody is selling a second hand bat, now you tell me, then call me up. I don't have money to buy. But after persistent, when I got the first bat, my goodness, look at the way I showed off in the, in the, in the cricket field. I went, that fellow used to bring his bat every time. I have got bat, my own. You know, the sense of great belonging. Okay. And the word bothering often in our culture was used as something negative. But the, the Greek version of this particular verse, I liked, I liked this and I thought I must share it with you. Okay. The word bother in Greek, which is used here, I've literally taken from the dictionary. It says like this, the, the biblical concordance dictionary. It is the word bother means to take trouble to do something. Hallelujah. It's not in the negative sense. The women bothered the judge to take trouble. And the, and the scholars who write about this definition say, this is one of the definitions which is often used by scientists to make inventions. Somebody bothered to find out why the apple fell and he found the laws of gravity. Somebody bothered to find why light travels. Somebody bothered. So the word bother in prayer is to take the trouble to do something. And in this case, Jesus is saying, take the trouble to pray. Hallelujah. That's all. Okay. Bother me by prayer. Consistently come to me in prayer because this word invents something new that never existed in the past. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, I, I bothered and a bat came after a couple of, couple of years. Okay. I want to say this to you, my friends. Are you bothering? Are you bothering God? And we want to be a church that bothers God, takes trouble to do something. And something that God wants us to do is to call out to him in prayer. Reach out to him in the difficult circumstances. And when we do that, God invents something. Okay? And this is the definition that God wants us to do. Take the trouble to do something. Not your neighbor and say, praying is taking trouble to do something. Okay? Take trouble to do something. That's what praying is. The fears and the intensity increased in this woman every time she appeared. So much so that the judge, look at this guy, a, a, a chief metropolitan magistrate is saying, if I don't do it, she's going to attack me. Hallelujah. I like that verse. She's going to attack me. Can you ever think of poor widow coming and attacking a chief justice of the city? Can you imagine? And here is the judge saying, my goodness. She's taking trouble to do something. 
And if I don't do something, she's going to attack me. She became fierce. Intensity increased. The passion and consistency sent a message of, I am not going to let go of you. I am not going to leave you, God, till you bring a breakthrough. Like the way I stuck to my dad. I'm not going to leave you, dad, till you buy me a cricket bat. I stuck. I stuck. And that's what not letting go is all about. I am convinced with your decision, the judge said, because her consistency made him, in this case, God, change his decision to delay. Hallelujah. The unjust just said, my goodness, I cannot tarry it anymore. I need to act. And God moved in this circumstance. And that is what the word bother in this parable all about. Are you taking trouble to do something for God? She was driven to see that justice will be done in her case. She was driven to see perseverance. And she was happy to consistently move forward because she trusted that God consistently works in perseverance. Hallelujah. Okay. That's what prayer does. The result of her persistence is very interesting. I will see that justice is done. Hallelujah. From no justice, he became the ownership to ensure justice is done. The, I will never give you justice. Now he's saying, I will take upon myself to ensure that justice is done to you. What a move. What a transformation. Prayer moves the heart of God. Prayer moves God to do something. I shared with you on Noah's Ark. The altar moved the heart of God. And God made a resolution that day. Never am I going to wipe out my creation ever again. The altar of prayer, the altar of sacrifice, moved the heart of God. Who says God doesn't have a heart? He has a heart and he moves when his people pray. And we as a church will embrace this value to bother God. We will bother God with everything. We will do something to see transformation come to prayer. So what is it? Prayer is consistently bothering God. Second principle that I drove from this parable of what Jesus said. Very important principle. Think about it. Go back. Are you bothering God? If you're not bothering, are you bothering God? Enough is what I want to ask you. Third thing, as I move forward, last thing that I want you to think about it before I unpack the theme, prayer moves ownership to God. Right now, I am going through a sickness. Okay, it could be cancer, it could be arthritis, it could be anything. I am going through, but when we move in prayer, we shift the ownership to say, Lord, it's your battle. Today, Anugra said, unless God is the commander and the strategist, of your battle, you will never win. God becomes the owner. He becomes the one who makes the strategy to displace our battles. We will fight and consistently remain to ensure that there is ownership. You know, it's like this. I don't know how many of you know, if you ever watered your garden, if you need a long pipe and you don't have a pipe and you try to connect both the pipes, they will ob ob obviously get disconnected. But there is something called a joint. And prayer is this. The human element gets plugged in and this plugged in, and this remains consistently supplied because the ownership now of flowing water remains on this joint. It remains on this. Okay? And these are connected opposite direction. Every time there's a pressure, it'll, it'll hold it. Every time there's a pressure from the side, it'll hold on. The ownership of free flow of water now moves onto this joint. And when you are a praying church, God becomes this joint between you and him to ensure what he does flows through the connector and the connector is God himself. God moves into ownership. And I like it. When God takes the ownership, we are on the winning side. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust justice. And will not God bring justice for his chosen ones to so cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that you get justice and you will get it quickly. However, when the son of man comes, he says, he will be finding it very difficult for people of faith on the earth, which means very rarely there will be people calling on to the name of the Lord. Okay. There is a last verse as an amazing translations. Go to any commentary and you'll find the second coming of Jesus. One of the biggest empathy that you can think about is people living prayerless lives. And I pray church that we will be a church that will consistently be the ownership of our prayers 
is Christ and God himself. We will press on to have that kind of an ownership. Okay? Prayer like this will see justice come quickly because ownership is God. Night and day indicates in the parable consistency that we will stick to prayer. God will bring justice. He will bring healing. He will bring evangelism. If you're praying for somebody in your family and you feel 10 years, 15 years, I want to give up. Don't give up. Consistently pray for them. You will see them turn towards the Lord. Their eyes will turn. The knees will bow and their tongues will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, there is no other way on the earth for them. They cannot escape the magnificent God. Pray, pray. Their knees will bow. They, they will call upon the name of Jesus. They will take water baptism. They will go through the gift of the Holy Spirit and they will become the servants of God. Pray, pray, pray. It took 15 years of prayer for my family to come to the Lord. Pray, pray, pray. Don't, don't, don't give up. Consistently seek God in prayer. The result, God is willing to move and to do things for us. He's willing to take up the ownership like he said to us, in this parable. The result is this. Prayer brings assurance and confidence that our God moves. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer brings assurance and confidence that our God moves. Hallelujah. He moves. Our God moves. Okay. Are you ready for the theme for the 2020-21 as, as I'm going to share with you? Okay, if you're ready, nudge your neighbor and get through. I've set my stage on the word of God this morning as I shared with you the theme for this year. The theme for the year 2020-21 is this. Pray until it moves. I'm going to give you some time. The theme for the year 2020-21. Pray until it moves. Hallelujah. Okay. If you're happy, excited, okay, share, okay, what? Pray till it moves. Okay, I'm going to have prayer driven through our theme this year. And we're going to be people, we will pray till it moves. We will not be given up by unjust judges. We will not give up because things are so difficult. We will have this as a theme that says that we will be a church that prays until it moves. NFC will continue to battle on closed cases. Every case where humanly we feel is impossible because it's a battle of non-equals. NFC will be, be the chosen ones to seek, seek justice for our nation. We will pray for the country India. We will pray for every tribe. We will pray for every language, irrespective of what people think, irrespective of what they propagate, irrespective of what they say. We will be the chosen ones who will pray for this nation, India. We will pray and ask God to be merciful to the country, India. NFC will be known to win battles of non-equals. We are no match to the prime minister of this country. We are no match to the president of this country. We are no match to the population of which is non-Christians in this country. We are no match, but we will be known to win the battles of non-equals. That's how we will be known, okay? NFC will see justice done and the ownership of justice will be on God. It will not be on us. We will not pick up weapons. We will pick up weapons of prayer. We'll allow God to do justice for this nation. He loves this nation. He loves this nation. I want to encourage you, my friends. If you're praying for somebody and, you, and who has not come to the Lord, keep praying. Keep praying. Don't give up. I want to encourage you. If you're struggling with some sin or bad habit and you're feeling how long, keep praying. God will set you free. Move the ownership into his life. If you're praying for some sickness and every time you go for this medical report, you're scared, skeptical, afraid. Pray God will move. Pray the thing moves. Pray the mountain will move because that is what we are going to be in this year. Our theme is we will pray till it. Our testimonies are going to be our God has moved as we pray. I want you to be that. And what do I want from you as you sign off for this theme? I do not know how many of you are aware about this engineering tool. It's a beautiful tool, which is called the Tuflin or the sealant tape. Normally, the plumbers use it when they fit the pipe for a free flow. They tie it on it, and then they put this around it, and then they try it. I want the church to be this. Every time there's a prayer, I want you to come in as a Tuflin tape and say, hey, I'm in. 
tighten us. And we want to be that that battles through this year to see God move as this insignificant tape which remains connected to the body of Christ in NFC. Whether, is, whether Nim is leading, whether Burley is leading, when she's calling out for prayer, come in along. Burley is leading, come along. Or Jenny is leading, come along. And become a tufflin tape that joins together so that there is no leak. There is no leak. And we are plugged in, connected into the season of prayer. Okay? And with that, I want to set the theme that we will pray until it moves. Okay? So we want to thank the church. I especially want to thank Jenny. Jenny is going to make a, we are, we are in the process of making a beautiful souvenir. Okay? The souvenir will be ready by the by the 20th of this month, hopefully, okay, through printing and everything. It will arrive to your desk by the 20th. We will try to do. But for the month of January, we're going to give you the January portion of that by soft copy while the printing happens so that you don't miss uh, being part of the prayer teams and the prayer prayer theme as it flows through this year into your life. Okay, uh, The hard copy of it will arrive to you. We are planning to give one per family. In case you feel you need more, feel free to reach out. Before we send out, we will ask you for how many copies you need. We will show mm -hmm. it to you. And based on that, we will send you the number of copies. Feel free. Also, if some of you want to give that as a souvenir for somebody else to put it on the desk as prayer that moves, it will have a calendar. It will also have a, some portion of writing notes available. It's a good souvenir for you to give to somebody and say, hey, this year our church has called ourselves prayer until it moves. Give to non-Christians. Is there anything that you want us to pray? And we'll be more than happy to pray for you. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to maybe receipt what I said this morning okay and spend some time uh, thinking on the theme as it unpacks okay uh, take a minute ponder on it spend some time looking on what uh, god is speaking to us that we will be a church that prays until it moves hallelujah okay pray until it moves so join me as i pray and seal this theme for the year 2021 if your wife children are around get them along put their hands come on Father, we want to thank you for leading us into this theme that we will be like the persistent widow mentioned in the Bible. Lord, which is the central theology for prayer. That Lord, we will be people who will not give up. But I pray as this theme unpacks for the NFC, help us to be a community known to be a praying community. Yes. Calling on to the name of God. Yes. Known to win battles of non-equals. To know that our God moves. Prayer is an assurance and confidence that our God moves. We don't serve a dead God. We yes. serve a living God Amen. who moves and acts on his behalf. As this unpacks, Lord, I pray for Jenny. She'll have all the wisdom as she designs this. Mm. Lord, I pray, bless her, surround her, mm. and may this souvenir come out as something that will be a constant reminder for us to press on in this year on the theme of praying until it moves in our life. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.